One of my favorite film noirs, it's 1947's Out of the Past, starring Robert Mitchum and Jane Greer. Let me tell you why I think this is a great film noir. I think one of the best ever. Coming up next. <laughs> Out of the Past, directed by Jacques Tourner, 1947, was given a big budget. Now, normally at this time in Hollywood history, the film noir, the crime noir movies, which are exploding in, during World War II and thereafter in the late 1940s, usually given B-movie budgets. And a lot of the ones that are recommended to you on film noir lists will be lower budget. But this one had something of a budget starring Robert Mitchum, who was a known star. But this role sort of changed his a character type and personality on screen, a smooth-talking, laconic man who hid a lot of things. And here he plays a character, Jeff Bailey, who is a gas station owner in the very small town of Bridgeport, somewhere out west, I think in California. And he is hiding a deep, dark past. He's taken a lover, a lovely young woman, and they're out in the meadows and, and enjoying an Edenic existence. But along comes into the town one of his old gangster friends or enemies the gangster friend tells him you must go see your old boss whom jeff ran away from because he fleed with the boss's lover and it's a very complicated movie this way because jeff is going to revisit his past vis-a-vis -vis seeing this old lover who they had a weird and and bizarre separation that i won't spoil for you and then the boss whom he has fleed from and the boss well hey the boss might kill him after all i need your help like old times. I always liked you. You liked me because you could use me. You could use me because I was smart. I'm not smart anymore. I run a gas station. I like the view. Can you still listen? I can hear. Film noir, crime noir, gothic novels, gothic literature, gothic movies tend to play with a the theme of a history or a past that's always present. And usually it's some kind of seedy or sinful past producing guilt and haunting someone who, like Jeff, a middle-aged man, is, has a criminal past he's trying to escape from and reinvent himself. But one of the questions of this movie is, can you in America, as some of the promise of America is, reinvent yourself, create a new identity, and you'll be free from the past that haunts you. And of course, this movie, given the title, you know that's not going to be the case. One thing that comes up with this assumption that the dirty past is always haunting you is that history matters and that history dark seedy history is always influencing the present in some way as well there's a psychological baggage psychological guilt on the part of these characters who jeff has to keep it together it, whenever he has a surprise or a new revelation and there are a bunch of those for him in this movie as well he wants a nice small town american life but can he have it given all the psychological baggage. We'll see if this noir turns out to be different than most noir, which is usually fatalistic and deterministic. One of the movie's clear contrast is small town America and big city criminality. Here you've got the invader, that is the gangster coming in at the very beginning of the movie. Jeff Bailey has already come in and is settled in the town. So it's a nice pleasant town with an Edenic-like environment and here you have the influence of the big city. One of the great things about this movie, I think, is the opening shot that seems pedestrian, the road signs that show that Bridgeport is connected to other places. The movie shows us that there's not necessarily a complete separation between small town and criminal big city aspects. In fact, they're connected, and that's exactly to me what the sign is telling us. That Yes, there's two ways to go, and as far as a moral and ethical choice for all the characters, including Jeff, go to Bridgeport, or go to Las Vegas, or the big city crime boss, as it were, but they're also connected, and they will be forever connected, and one can come into the other here, the gangsters coming in to the small town. As well, that sign points us to connections between past, present, and future, and Jeff's past, yes, it's gonna come back and haunt him, and that's the threat to him being able to start over in a small town. The movie has a very wonderful femme fatale played by Jane Greer. Most femme fatales in movies, usually they are very pretty, they're nice, and then they use their femininity and sexuality to sort of get their way in order to trick people, let's say. They pretend to, to love someone, but they really have you know ulterior motives, usually criminal motives. Here, Jane Greer, yes, she has this aspect, in her character, but she plays this character so wonderfully. I'm often 
when I watch this, not sure what she really believes or what her angle is. And a lot of times I feel like, yes, she does love Jeff as she claims to, but she also wants different kinds of things from him or she wants to undermine him. I don't think there's a clear division between those two. In fact, she may want both at the same time to love him, but to undermine him and get rid of him. And that's really interesting. I think that that's like the road sign aspect where the two things are connected. Yet those are complete opposites, and yet that's part of the human character that she brings to this movie. Then, of course, there's this contrast between the Jane Greer character and the small town girl, and that, you know, the representative of the small town itself and then the big city, perhaps, or criminality in general. And then the choice is Jeff's. It's a moral, ethical, and cultural choice all at the same time between these two women. Whom will he choose? That's one of the great things about this movie is it's sort of about America in general, perhaps, overall after World War II. Whom will we choose? Which course will we choose? Which moral path will we choose? That's a theme that comes up in a number of post-World War II movies, including It's a Wonderful Life. Go check out my video on that because very clearly in that movie, George Bailey has a choice. And it's very clear that there are two different ways to go, small town versus sort of big city. Same thing going on here in this movie. The director, Jacques Tournier, brings noir to all aspects of life here, usually in noir movies. It's this big city, it's the shadowy alleyways, the deep dark corners, the haunted looking buildings, apartment buildings that are cramped and have you know a lot of backlighting or heavy front lighting. Here you've got that, but also you've got forests, you've got outdoor environments, you've got Lake Tahoe escapes, you've got Mexico, and each of these has this dark shadowy, as we say, noir-like element to it. It's usually really heavy, flooded front lighting. I can't imagine the actors didn't go blind while they were on the set of this. The movie, very interesting to me as well, is about film noir itself coming into small towns and invading the small towns, the criminals here, representative types of the movies themselves. This had been discussed for decades, how, for example, in the Hollywood's Hayes Code, that movies were invading small towns and perpetrating deviant morality amongst naive rural peoples, at least in the United States. You can go read the Hayes Code, it actually says that out loud. And here you've got that very same thing, the invasion by the movies, film noir, coming in and sort of seducing, as it were, the young people to the consternation of the man who wants to be the lover of the young girl who loves Jeff Bailey, but he can't, he's really jealous. The small towns wanna to keep their borders and patrol them here, but they can't because Jeff Bailey's already come in and then other sorts of cr criminal gangsters who have followed him into the town. Last then is this all wise character who in the movie is called deaf and dumb. He can't hear and he can't speak presumably, but he seems to be the wisest, craftiest person of all. And I think that may signal to us that, you know, these small towns may be deaf and dumb, quote unquote naive, as the Hayes Code puts it, but really they're as crafty and as wise, or at least some people in them can be as wise and nifty as other people plotting and undermining others in this movie. And the movie clearly showcases Robert Mitchum as a great actor, one of the great faces in movie history, one of the great voices, and he's a wonderful actor. You should pursue him in just about every movie he's made, including The Night of the Hunter, which I have a video on. What do you think of Out of the Past? Let us know in the comments, and please subscribe to this channel. Have a great day.